Hello there, I am God of War Geek, hope you're all having an awesome day and welcome to my channel. Just before I start, I would just like to kindly ask you guys to like the video and subscribe. These two very tiny things really do help a smaller channel like mine get out there to as many people as possible. If you could do either of these two things then it would really mean a lot to me. So with that out of the way, let's get to it. So today I want to talk about the big guy with the badass hammer, Thor. I really wanted to take some time to talk about where I think he is mentally and what might motivate him, and so on and so forth. I think he was always going to be portrayed as a deeper character than we all realised, which Thor's voice actor Ryan Hurst has confirmed. Ryan was being interviewed by the YouTube channel called Original Funko and he was asked how he approached bringing Thor to life, alongside what Eric Williams wanted from him. Ryan said he tried to bring a more human side to the character, and that there is also a pathos to Thor. Pathos is actually a word I did not know the meaning of. Apparently it means to inspire us, the audience, to pity him, feel sadness for him. And maybe this could apply to Kratos and Atreus too. And I really do feel that there is a sadness within Thor. His crimes across the realms will never be forgotten, and he truly deserves to be punished for the things he did. But things that happen in our lives do shape us, sometimes for the good, probably more often for the bad. We all handle things differently and act a certain way. Some of us hold it in and suffer quietly and others just literally want the world to burn and fuck whatever consequences come after. And for a while now I've been starting to see Thor in a different light. Yes, I do still believe that Thor could be a giant baby who tantrums when he doesn't get his own way. But I really do think he is someone who desperately craves a father that will put his arm around him and say he is proud. What son or daughter doesn't want that from a parent? But more than anything, I think Thor is a deeply wounded man by the loss of his mother. And it might be a tool Odin has used in his own grief to punish Thor with. Now it's not known if he really killed his mother. Atreus assumes he did. But I just do not believe that Thor did it. And if Odin truly loved her, then why would he poison his son to kill her? It just doesn't make any sense. I think the death of his mother has been unfairly attached to Thor, which has affected him greatly. This has taken form in ways such as overeating, fits of anger, fighting and drinking. More or less anything to numb the pain. Now you could say that this is the Aesir way of living, but I think Thor is one of those that goes over the top and clearly it has affected his wife and children. I am sure that all of us at some time of our lives have experienced various levels of stress and depression and to comfort ourselves we retreat inwards and start to eat more than we would normally or drink alcohol daily, exercise less or maybe even turn to drugs and the emptiness and rot just gets bigger. And I can admit that I have struggled with my own mental health for many years, it is a constant battle and I definitely see Thor in this light. I think he's constantly trying to attain his father's approval, which is kind of funny when you think about it, because it is the exact same thing Magni and Modi were doing, and maybe his daughter Thrud is a part of this too. Modi was certainly a creepy guy for the things he said, but in my opinion, from his own words, you can probably see how mentally fragile he was. I mean, he was oddly desperate to take on Atreus as his younger brother. He was just so desperate to gain his dad's approval that he, he, he tried to look for it in Atreus. So Thor just repeated his father's mistakes, which is very typical. And then there is probably the mistreatment of his wife Sif. Now I'm not saying this is all a fact, but there could be a storyline where Thor had an affair with the giant Jan Saxa, making him a failure as a husband. And Thor who was known for his drunken rage, he may have been physically and or mentally abusive toward his wife and daughter which would put cracks into anyone's families. Magni and Modi were both competing for the hammer, but why not Thrud? She is Thor's daughter after all. I'm sure she is going to be strong, and if she is also a Valkyrie, similar to Freya, then we know the Valkyries are no joke. Is she not good enough to compete for the hammer? Could she have been cast aside by her own father because she is a woman and considered weaker? Is Thrud similar to Modi, where she gets next to no praise and Magni really was the golden child? Thor, for the most part, has failed his family. But now I want to talk about another thing that Ryan said, which was that Thor will also be investigating his relationship with his father Odin. It won't be long now until we see how that looks, but it is my hope that cracks do appear in their relationship, and that Thor, during the three years of Fimbulwinter, has started to question Odin's rule. 
that the decisions Odin has made are not best for all, but only for his own sake, and maybe it's time for a new Allfather. Just maybe it is his time to take the throne. I am sure by now Thor realises he is seen as nothing more than a weapon for Odin to use as he pleases, and no matter what he does, he will never be good enough for his father. All Odin cares about is his own survival. I think Thor knows that he has been a terrible father and husband, but when your father is Odin, who only taught you war and encouraged you to kill, what do we expect Thor to be? A kind and great guy? Father of the year every year? Of course not. He has been his father's monster for so long now that he doesn't know how to be anything else. But at least according to Ryan, he is trying to be better. Perhaps a little too late, but better late than never, I suppose. I think the biggest question is, is Thor deserving of a second chance? Is he redeemable? This might surprise many of you, but I think the answer is yes, in my own personal opinion. Does he deserve forgiveness? No, I think Kratos will never f fully forgive himself for all the innocent lives he took. I think Kratos and Thor are very much alike. Both were used for someone else's gain. But one difference I would say is, I think there was a time where Thor enjoyed the kill, and perhaps still does to some extent. Whereas I think Kratos did it as more of a job. But the biggest difference is Kratos has had the time to try and be better. Thor has always been an instrument of war. Kratos lived in Midgard for 75 years, finding peace and quiet before meeting Fey, who he spent a further 39 years with. So, 114 years to work on himself, whereas Thor has been fighting non-stop his entire life. And Thor could be older than Kratos, potentially much older. And we have all come to love Kratos for all his flaws in the past to who he is now. So Thor could have it in him to do the same. Kratos could actually be a very good influence on Thor, and part of me really hopes Thor won't be an enemy. At least not completely, but here is where I am ending the video. Because of spoilers, I am disabling the comment section. We should want to prevent as many people as possible from being spoiled, but if you are fine with it, then I'm sure you can find them for yourself. But sadly, because I cannot ask you guys your thoughts, can you do me the kindness of showing your support by liking the video as it helps spread it and my channel to the wider audiences. Subscribing will also mean a lot to me. Share and click the bell to be notified for every time I post. Thank you all so much for watching, goodbye and take care.